Okay, hello. Uh, this is the 14th talk of the Chromatic and Stellensatz seminar in Ruschel. Um, and today we're going to be talking about constructible spectra of TN local algebras or commutative algebras. This is roughly the content of chapter seven of the Chromatic and Stellensatz paper. I'm just going to be going over sort of the main results here and sort of explain why this is like this re really useful notion. Um, also, due to some technical difficulties, this is like all being sort of like recorded a posteriori. So it might be slightly quicker than normal, but I'll be sending out these notes. You can go over them at your own pace. So uh, just briefly recall that a TN local community of algebra is null Stellensatzian if it's um, if and only if it's equivalent to the Lubin Tate spectrum of an algebraically closed uh, field over your like base. Um, setup is just sort of the same as we've, we've sort of had it before. You're like fixing some perfect field, some formal group of height n over that field, you know, all the usual stuff. Now, classically, the Nostellan sots lets us uh, study a ring, like a discrete ring, by looking at its geometry. So we can like take a ring, we can take the set of prime ideals, and we know that the sort of geometric points of associated to this, like, this is Risky spectrum of ring correspond to, like, classical points that we might think of from, like, classical algebraic geometry and the theory of, like, varieties over, you know, much nicer rings than we'd use in schemes. Um, so the question here is that can we use the sort of chromatic nostalgic sorts to organize the geometry of TN local algebras in a similar way? And basically the idea is that we can. This is how. So first I'm going to talk a little bit about sort of the abstract theory of constructible spectra. Um, so to start, uh, let's see be a presentable uh, infinity category where um, the point would be the terminal object of C. So we see that the terminal object is strict if every map out of it is an isomorphism. Uh, a category would then be called weakly spectral if it's compactly generated and the point and the terminal object is both strict and compact. And finally, we say that it's spectral if it has satisfies these sort of additional like niceness conditions that sort of help things work out for like cardinality reasons. Um, the idea here being that in the category of like discrete commutative rings, uh, the equation zero is equal to one, like saying that the, the sort of multiplicative unit and the additive unit are the same element uniquely specifies the zero ring. So, and the zero ring is of course the terminal object of this category. So we say, we know that the category of commuted rings is weakly spectral. Um, and really like a weakly spectral category is like abstracts this idea of like ring-like objects. So as you might expect then, the category of commutative algebras in spectra or even like EM algebras in spectra are all weakly spectral. Um, and the TN local category is in fact spectral. Um, and, the, and it turns out the TN local category has like a lot of like nice ways of things sort of work out that we'll see later that aren't really true general commutative algebras. So the theorem here, this construction is that if you have a weakly spectral category, then there exists a functor, which is the constructible spectra functor from C op into compact T1 topological spaces with closed continuous maps between them. So, so all these conditions are satisfied. I'm not going to go over them because we're going to talk about them in just a second. But um, the uh, sort of important one is that if you assume that C is additionally spectral, then you can construct this as a left con extension, where over here, this category is the category of products of Nostal and Satsian objects, um, which embeds fully faithfully into C. Uh, and then you can define this constructible spectra on these parts of the Nostal and Satsian objects by simply taking like products of points. Um, that's condition B up here, that uh, the constructible spectrum of an object is a point if and only if it's Nostal and Satsian. Uh, and then left con extend that across C to get sort of like the constructible spectra of like any arbitrary object. Uh, so this is like really the statement that like uh, we call um, the elements of this constructible spectra like geometric points of R. They're things you can probe with Nostal and Salstein objects, which you think of as like, you know, algebraically closed fields in the classical case. Um, and like this left con extension is saying that the same way that we can form um, like any any like ring is like a sort of co-limit of like fields or like so, or we can form like any algebra like some co-limit of fields. We can sort of analogously form um, the 
uh, spectrum of a ring as like taking co-limits over like individual points, which are like the geometric points. Um, so like as an example, the constructible spectrum in the category of commutative rings, like according to this whole construction, uh, agrees with is isomorphic to the Zariski spectrum R, you know, the set of like all prime ideals with this thing called the constructible topology. Now, this is a bit of a weird notion. Um, in particular, if you've heard of like Chevalier's theorem or constructible sets, this is like a different thing. Um, but the constructible topology on uh, spec R has close sets, things that are like the image of maps spec B to spec A for like any map of uh, any like A algebra B. So this thing is like much finer than the Zariski topology and it has like some applications classically in the theory of like like pro etal topologies and other sort of like arithmetically minded things. Um, you can check out the stacks project tag here for like some more information about that, but I'm not really going to get into it. So sort of specializing all these results. So like basically proving this and like setting up all this sort of abstract theory is the content of the uh, appendix A in this paper. Um, but if you specialize that to the TN local case, you get the following. So now let uh, C be the category of pairs where A here is a product of algebraically closed fields and then H is a formal group of height n over them. Um, now this thing has a fully faithful functor to TN local uh, commutative algebras, which is called the generalized E theory. So this is like, it's basically like sort of the standard Morava E theory construction, except you have to be careful because you're not necessarily working with just fields. Uh, you can check this out in, um, I believe, generalized um, elliptic cohomology too uh, has a construction of what this exactly is. Um, now, this category, you can just take the Ricci spectra of this A here and you land in compact Hausdorff spaces. So if you left con extend along this, you get the uh, constructible spectrum functor. So this is just the same construction as we did before because now, uh, like by the chromatic Nostalin Sots, the Nostalin Sots and objects of this TN local category are just things that are products of algebraically closed fields. Well, this E theory of algebraically closed fields. Um, so then, sort of rewriting all the results, you get that you have this constructible spectrum functor, which takes in a TN local algebra, spits out a, a compact house or space, where first uh, this spectra is empty if and only if R is zero, and it's a point uh, if and only if you're. Uh, it's the E theory of an algebraically closed field. Um, in addition, we know that for every point uh, in spec cons R, there exists a sort of like you can realize it as like the geometric as like the image of some geometric point. So there's some map from R to the E theory of an algebraically closed field, which uh, the image of which is this Q. Similarly, um, we know that the closed sets in this constructible spectra in this constructible spectrum are just the things that are the image of, of uh, some other uh, TN algebra by like on constructible spectra. And finally, given a span, so if you can like take this sort of push out with a natural map from the spectra of this push out of TN algebras to the pullback of constructible spectra is like surjective. So like any geometric point here comes from a geometric point of the span. And we can actually explicitly describe what these points are um, because like this notion of um, the geometric points means really putting an equivalence relation on all of the, uh, the set of all the maps from R to any uh, Stalin Satian TN algebra where, and what we know is that, so if you have um, some R, you have some algebraically closed fields L1 and L2 and you have maps Q1 and Q2 from R to EL1 and EL2, then the following things are equivalent. Uh, you can have that these points are the same in terms of like their geometric, they represent the same geometric point, these maps. Uh, you, if you take the, uh, the, uh, the push out of their span, then this thing is non-zero. Uh, third is that if there exists some other algebraically closed field and a community diagram like this, um, and then fourth is that if you have any map from in TN local R modules from a compact object, then this map is nilpotent at EL1, if and only if it's nilpotent at E of L2. Uh, the proof of this is again in the appendix. Um, hopefully these first three things are sort of clear why these things are equivalent. Like for example, 
if this test product is not zero, then you can embed it into some algorithmic closed field. That thing is going to be your L3 and sort of so on. Um, but why this is helpful is that now uh, we can use these constructible spectra to like tell when a map detects del potents. So recall that we say that a map of TN local algebras detects del potents if and only if, or uh, detects del potents whenever, you know, for any map in compact TN local R modules. So this map from M to N is nilpo, and if and only if its base change to uh, S modules is nilpo N. So the theorem here is that some map detects nilpo N if and only if it's the pullback map on constructible spectra is like surjective. So in the forward direction, we know that if um, F detects nilpo N, it's nil conservative. So if the tense, if it, the base change of some module is zero, then that thing was zero to begin with. This is a proposition 4.32. Uh, so then what that means is that if you look at this, um, at the fiber of this map on structural spectra over some geometric point Q, then that's going to be equivalent to the uh, constructible spectra of EL tensor S over R. Um, and by assumption, E of L is non-zero. So this whole tensor product has to be non-zero, which means that the fiber over every point has at least one point. So the map is surjective. In the reverse direction, uh, we first claim that you know for any uh, for any R, there exists some no-points detecting map from R to E of A, where A here is a product of algebraic closed fields. The way you can do this is that by uh, 5.1, there is going to be a map from R to E of A where uh, a or a prime, where a prime is a perfect k algebra of crawl dimension zero, and then you can embed a prime into the product of its residue fields, and then this map here will detect null points like by 5.1, and this map from e of a prime to e of a will detect null points by proposition 4.47. So this comp this composite map uh, r to e of a here will detect null points as well. Now with that, let uh, R to S be a map of TN algebras inducing a surjection on spectra. So now you can choose no points to take maps first from R to E of alpha, then from E of alpha tensor S over R to E of B, or sorry, uh, E of A, E of B. And then you can put this into the following diagram. So where here you have R mapping to E of A, S mapping to E of A tensor S over R, and then you know that this composite here is gonna be no points to take sort of by construction. And we know that this map over here induces surjection. This is like the thing about taking uh, pushouts of algebras on constructible spectra. And this map over here will detect null potents and therefore induce surjection by the sort of forward direction of this proposition or this theorem. And therefore, um, and in that case, the map from A to B or sorry, the map on constructible spectra from E of A to E of B will actually identify with the map on Zariski spectra from uh, E of A, the, sorry, I should say E of A to E of B. Uh, that thing is going to be, or sorry, it's going to identify with the map on Zariski spectra from spec B to spec A. That thing is going to be surjective uh, because these two maps induce surjections. And therefore by 4.47, again, this map on uh, loop and Tate theory detects null poems. Uh, therefore, uh, this map up here has to detect null points because this composite down here also does. Okay, uh, as a corollary of this proof, you know that a map of TN local algebra is detects null points if and only if it's null conservative, which is like kind of amazing because you think of this as being like a much harder condition, whereas this is like sort of much, much more mild. Um, so that's great. And finally, there's some isomorphisms that help you like sort of compute these things. Uh, there's just like some computations you can like reference. Uh, so for like any perfect FP algebra of and uh, over some height n, which is greater than or equal to one, then you have the following isomorphisms commuted of Hausdorff spaces. So first, the uh, constructible spectra of E of A is just the Zariski spectra of A with the constructible topology, which we sort of defined above. Um, second is that if you take the constructible spectra of a uh, polynomial ring on E of A, then you just get the constructible spectra or the 
the Zariski specter of A adjoined T with, again, the constructible topology. And finally, if you take the constructible spectra of the TN local sphere, uh, or a free algebra on the TN local sphere with one generator, then you just get the constructible spectra of FP over T. So that's all very helpful. Um, so this paper doesn't do too much more with, with this notion, but hopefully in the future, you'll like see some more of this in like using that to like organize the geometry of T and local algebras. But yeah, that's basically uh, what I have to say. So if you have any questions, feel free to shoot me a message on Discord. And yeah, thanks for listening.